Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. It's time to be strong. One of the ways you can be strong is by not thinking about your problems all the time. <laughs> And not talking about your problems all the time. Think about it, talk about it, think about it, talk about it, think about it, think about it, think about it, talk about it, think about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, think about it, think about it, talk about it, talk about it. I mean, really, does it ever do any good? Never does any good. Now, obviously, we need to do what we need to do. Let's look at Ephesians 6, 12, and 13. And it's certainly not wrong to share what you're going through with somebody and ask them to pray for you or to get a little encouragement from them. But to be honest, when you have issues in your life and you've done all that you can do, the best thing you can do is just get your mind off of it by doing something else and let God do what only God can do. Here comes a good one for you, rolling up out of my spirit. It's okay for you to enjoy life while you have a problem. Come on, I'm giving you permission to enjoy your life. While you have a child that's still acting crazy, you can pray for him and still enjoy your life. While your marriage is not maybe all that you would like it to be, you can pray. You can do what God asked you to do. You can cast the rest of it on him and you can still enjoy your life. Amen. Amen. See, we make our minds up. Well, I just cannot enjoy my life till I don't have this problem anymore. Well, newsflash. <laughs> If you don't learn how to enjoy life while you have problems, you're likely to never get to enjoy life very much. And I don't mean that life is just nothing but problems, problems, problems. But honestly, you don't know what storms are in the forecast. We read the weather report last Monday for what it was going to be here. And what's happening today was not in the forecast. Amen. It was supposed to be in the 80s and woke up this morning without 50 something. I don't know, you know. So we need to stay strong and be strong. So, yes, I want every day to be great. I, you know, I wasn't looking to come to Colorado to preach and have a sore throat. I mean, that's, you know, that's not what I wanted. And last night when I got done, I thought, uh-oh. Well, maybe it's just because it's dry here. Then this morning when I got up, I thought, uh-oh, uh-oh. But you know what? I pray. I do what I can do. I got some cough drops. I took some vitamin C. <laughs> I showed up, and the rest is up to God. Amen. And you know, if you're anything like me, then the devil pulls out the what if. Well, what if this problem never goes away? You ever hear that one? What if this never goes away? So, of course, for me, I'm thinking, what if? <laughs> what if? Uh, I can't preach. What if? Well, you know what? Here's the bottom line. Even if that happens, I still can't do anything about it. So I'm still going to, whether I preach or I don't preach, I'm going to do it from rest. I'm going to rest in God. I got somebody else with me that could, and we got a lot of great singers, and if that happened, I'll come up here and smile at you and wave at you and come and pinch your little cheeks and pull your ears and give you a little kiss or something, and we'll just worship God and have a good time, amen? Because look at me, here's one thing we're not going to do. We're not going to be defeated by the devil. Yes. Ephesians 6, 12, and 13. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, the powers, the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. So here's the bottom line. We have an enemy 
His name is Satan, Lucifer, the devil. He has lots of little helpers. The Bible calls them evil spirits and demons. And I know maybe somebody watching, you, you're just like, hey, well, what in the world? What is she teaching about that? <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't do any good to stick your head in the sand and pretend that things don't exist that do. We all know that there's a force of good in the world, which is God, and a force of evil. And we need to realize that in God, we can stand against the evil, we can resist it, and we can have great, wonderful, amazing, fruitful lives. But we can't fight an enemy that we pretend isn't there. I blamed all my problems on people for a long, long time before I found out that it was the devil that was behind it all. Amen. Yes, my father was the one that sexually abused me, but me hating him was never going to do anything to him or anything for me, and it wasn't going to help the kingdom. And when I found out it was really the devil working through him, then I got mad at the devil. Then I found out how to get the devil back, and the way to overcome the, the devil is to be as good to everybody as you possibly can. That is the true secret of being a child of God. You don't fight evil with evil. You don't return insult for insult and injury for injury. We forgive, we stay happy, we let God take care of things, and we pray that people will change. But if they don't, they're still in God's hands. If somebody hurt you 10 years ago, don't let them keep hurting you today. Did you hear me? If somebody hurt you five years ago, don't let them keep hurting you today. You release it to God today and you make a decision to enjoy your life. I didn't get a very good start in life, but I can tell you it doesn't make so much difference how you start. What, what is important is how you finish. And I've decided to fight the good fight of faith, finish my race, and I hope to take a bunch of folks with me. Verse 13, therefore put on God's complete armor that you might be able to resist and stand, everybody say stand. stand, your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all the crisis demands, you are to stand firmly in your place. God says that his truth will protect us, that knowing who we are in Christ will protect us. When you get a problem, don't say, well, God, don't you love me? That's the time to open your mouth and say, God, I know that you love me. Did you hear me? I said, when you get a problem, when a crisis comes, when something happens that makes no sense and you do not understand, don't say, well, God, don't you love me? That's when you say, nothing can separate me from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. I know that God loves me. I don't understand what's happening in my life, but I know that I know that I know that I know that God loves me and he is not the source of my problems. It's very easy to see what the enemy wants. He wants us to think, well, God doesn't love me. And, you know, he could have done something about this and he didn't, so I don't understand. I guess my faith just isn't working. I don't know about all this stuff. I go to church, go home, give, nothing changes. I don't know. I think I'll just quit. <laughs> well, you silly thing, you. That's not what God wants you to do. <laughs> it doesn't take any special anointing or talent to give up. Anybody can do that. You don't need to be a believer in Christ to quit and give up. But as believers in Christ, we can say, I am not going to quit and I am not going to give up because something good is going to happen to me. It's pretty easy to get into agreement with what I'm saying here. But see, I want to make sure that you can do this when you get home and there is no pretty music and cheerleader from the platform. When you're all by yourself and the devil's trying to beat your brains out and you've got your problem that you've had for so long, you feel like if you have it one more day, you cannot stand it. That's when you and only you, you are the only one that can make this decision for you. And when you make the decision to stand strong in God, it not only affects you, but it goes down your bloodline and affects all your children and grandchildren and it affects all the other people around you. This is not something we can wait to feel like doing. 
We have to understand that basically it's an emergency. <laughs> it's, an, it's an emergency in our lives that we stand strong and don't quit and don't give up. There's too much at stake for us to be up and down and up and down and happy when things are good and down when things are bad and happy when they're good and down when they're bad. I lived like that for so long it was disgusting. I got so tired of being what I called a yo-yo Christian. And here Dave, he's just like the, you know, the rock. <laughs> and his one message, his one message, our whole married life was cast your care on God, cast your care on God. It irritated me because I didn't know how to do it. Doesn't it make you mad when you're upset and you can't find anybody to be upset with you? <laughs> Everybody just says, well, trust God, just cast your care. You're like, I prefer to have a fit today if you don't mind. <laughs> so that's all right. Fall down if you must, but go back to sitting. <laughs> Get back up and keep running your race with God, amen? <laughs> Having done all the crisis demands, stand firmly in your place. So there are things for us to do. If you lost your job, that's a crisis. Well, go look for one. That's something you can do. Pray for one, that's something you can do. Pull in every favor that anybody out there has ever owed you. Be radical, do all the crisis demands. Then stand. And that word stand in the Greek means simply to abide in Christ or to enter the rest of God. I love that. To abide in Christ. Okay, it's like, I'm looking, God, you've got to give me favor. I showed up this morning, God, you got to make the voice work. I can do what I can do, but I can't do what only God can do. And this is what frustrates us to no end when we start trying to be Holy Ghost Junior. <laughs> How many of you are in relationship with somebody that just really desperately needs to change? <laughs> You're not sure. You don't know what's coming next. <laughs> One lady down here is with it. She's like... Okay, now, let me, can I tell you a secret? Are you ready? You can't change them. <laughs> Won't work. I don't care how much you preach, how many underlined Joyce Meyer books you leave open on the table. <laughs> I mean, you can make sure my television's program is on every time they're in the room. Yeah, you know, I mean, God might decide to use that, but the whole thing is, is if God doesn't decide to use it, nothing is going to work because it's got to be God and not us. Well, I just can't stand it if you don't change. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> and if you get to the point where you can't change it, where you can't stand it, then you'll know that from God and you'll do something else. But let me tell you the truth, we can put up with a whole lot more than what we think we can put up. There's a word in the Bible for it, it's called long suffering. And I look at me, when you're suffering, the more you can laugh, not at your problem, but the happier you can be, the more joy you can have in the rest of your life, the easier it is for you to deal with the problem. That's why, hey man, let's have a good time here this weekend. Wow. Matter of fact, I'm gonna stop right now and tell you a joke. I'm just gonna be goofy and just tell you a joke. There were two old people laying in bed, like really old. And they were each on their own side of the bed, and the lady said to the man, she said, oh, I remember when you used to hold my hand at night. So, little sigh, here comes this little crinkly hand across the bed, <laughs> takes her hand. Laid there for a minute, 
Like most women, wasn't satisfied with that, wanted more. So. <laughs> she said, you know, I remember when you used to hold me in your arms at night. So it took him a while, you know, finally wiggled over there and <laughs> moaned and groaned, getting everything to work while he got her in his arms. And she laid there for a couple minutes and then she said, you know, I remember when you used to nibble on my ear at night. <laughs> he said, all of a sudden he jumped up, started going somewhere. She said, where are you going? He said, well, I got to get my teeth. <laughs> Come on, it's good to laugh in the house of God. Amen. Woo. Man and woman got up one morning and she said, have you made the coffee? He said, no, I think you should make the coffee. She said, no, God says you should make the coffee. <laughs> and he said, where in the Bible does it say that I should make the coffee? And she said, Hebrews. <laughs> okay, now I have no idea why I stopped in the middle of my message to tell you jokes, but <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever works. <laughs> See, my point is, is you still have your problem, but you had a good laugh. It kind of aired everything out. You feel a little, took away a little bit of the stress, a little bit of the pressure. Stop thinking that you cannot enjoy your life until all of your problems are over with. A strong Christian who's standing in Christ and walking in God can enjoy their life because it's the will of God for them to enjoy it. And that doesn't mean you're living on vacation, but it means that you're living in the rest of God. You can enjoy life because you can look at this person that needs to change and say, you know what, I can't change you. God can, I believe he wants me to stay committed. So here's the thing, I hope he changes you, but even if he doesn't, I'm gonna be happy anyway. You hear me talk quite a bit if you watch the program a lot about the early years of mine and Dave's marriage and just how messed up I was. And you know, people that are hurting inside are unhappy. And when you're unhappy, you usually take it out on somebody else. And. Uh, you know, Dave tried for a while to keep me happy, and finally one day he just looked at me and he said, you know what, no matter what I do, you're still not happy, so I'm finished trying. I wasn't sure what that meant, but, <laughs> you know, Dave was still very good to me and kind to me, and he'd love me when I would let him, but he went about enjoying his life, and oh, that infuriated me. Honestly, because miserable people want to make other people miserable. That's, that's their goal. They're miserable and they want everybody around them to be miserable. And you're doing, you're doing the total wrong thing if you play into that. What you need to do is give them an example, a quiet, loving example of what life can be like with Christ. And you know what finally really turned me around? Dave's consistency. His peace and his joy became salt and light to me, and I, I thought, I want that. Now, if he would have just gotten unhappy with me, I would have never seen what I could have had. So if you're in a difficult relationship, has it ever occurred to you that you're there for ministry? I'll try this side, you're not getting that. I mean, seriously. <laughs> if you're in a difficult relationship, if you're at a difficult job where you're the only believer, <laughs> well, God, I'm the only believer. You gotta get me out of here. <laughs> really? I thought you were the one that prayed for God to use you. I mean, 
mean, do you realize what Dave, by God's grace, has done for the kingdom? <laughs> My gosh. I believe I was called from my mother's womb. My father started sexually abusing me when I was just a tiny little girl. My mother didn't do anything about it because she was afraid of him. My parents named me Pauline Joyce Meyer, which means a little preacher with a joyful spirit. And from the get-go, the devil tried to destroy me. I married the first young man that came along because I thought nobody would ever want me and he had more problems than me if that was possible. Had one child from that relationship, named him David. <laughs> Met Dave when he was nine months old. Dave was a strong, spirit-filled believer, praying for a wife, dating three girls. He believed faith without works was dead. Met me, I was outside washing my mother's car. Had on shorts, he thought I was good looking. Said, hey, when you're finished washing that car, you wanna wash mine? I said, if you want your car washed, wash it yourself. <laughs> and he said the thing that went off in him was that's the girl for me. <laughs> now, but now listen, here's what Dave had been praying. He'd been praying, God, I'm ready to get married. He was 26, he wanted to get married. He said, I, I wanna get married, I want a wife, and make it somebody that needs help. <laughs> well, I just encourage you to remember that you can stand strong in difficult times the same as you do in good times. We may not feel the same, but we don't have to let our feelings control us. When I first came to this place, this was a deserted uh, place with huge trees, rocks. It was like a den for most of the people. India is een heel arm land. In veel gebieden is er geen toegang tot drinkwater. Veel van deze plaatsen zijn onbewoond. When we dug the borewell, uh, then people got the news. They knew that. Uh, there is no water available in the area. That's how people started coming and started living in this area. Al meer dan 30 jaar zijn wij van Hand of Hope, het christelijk zendingwerk van Joyce Meyer Ministries, actief in India. Tot op heden hebben we honderden waterbronnen en kerken mogen bouwen. There are many wells in this village, about three or four, but each well is dedicated to one community or one caste or one religion. One other religion is not allowed to go there to fetch the water. But we drilled a well outside the compound of the church. So it is open for 24 hours. People can get water anytime they want. There were about 30 to 40 people attending the Sunday worship service prior to having digging the bore well. We have now around uh, or 500 people attending the Sunday worship service. Yeah, so we plant a seed, we get an opportunity to come align ourselves with the pastor. He gets to build a community of faith, find new leaders and go plant other churches, which is really the great story. And as our partners uh, and their faithful giving, uh, we can see that, which is really the great story, isn't it? It is such a privilege to be with you on this day. And on behalf of Joyce Meyer Ministry and Hand of Hope, we are pleased to present this water well. And we pray that this well will be a benefit to everybody around. And let this be a testament to God's love.
Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash shop. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse inspiratie? Inspirerende gedachten levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan.